Hey folks, Dr. Groovy Scott Grove from GroovyMusicLessons.com here. Uh, today I'm going to talk about direct boxes. What they're used for, do you need one, um, how to actually use them. There is a few channels on YouTube here where people are like, this is the best video I've ever found on these. They're like four minute videos. Can you explain what they do and all their uses in four minutes? No. So, I'm going to go as long as it takes because on a, one of them I found of those four minute videos, there were 239 questions. Okay, so I'm going to read through the ones that I highlighted and um, give you those answers at the end of this. I will do a quick uh, run through of what they're for. And if you want to leave after that, groovy, get out. But if you have a question, I will answer it. Um, at a point where you don't even have to ask it because I will cover 100% of the questions asked by those 239 people. Okay, so let's get on with it. Okay, so here's the direct box on a mound of gray muff. <laughs> yes, inside granny's panties. Okay, I know, sick and twisted. That's what you get with the doctor. Okay, this is one of many types of direct boxes. This is a passive one, which means there's no battery in here. Um, it is not controlled by phantom power on the mixing board. And I will answer these questions about batteries and so forth. Um, some people want to know if they have a battery inside their bass guitar or a battery inside their uh, electric guitars or their acoustic guitars. Do you need a um, direct box that doesn't have a battery? No, your batteries mean nothing when it comes to direct boxes. They're either active or passive. Active means they have a battery in them. Why would they have a battery in them? Um, to do uh, different things. There are some that have preamps in them so that you can actually change the tone going to the PA system and so forth. Um, that's the only reason they're really in there because they need power to do something. Okay, so what we have here is a box that connects um, instruments, uh, pretty much um, anything other than acoustic drums and electric guitars, for the most part. Electric guitars, unless you are uh, recording at home using software. And I will go through that in a little bit. So bass guitars, keyboards, acoustic electric guitars, and so on. Anything with piezo pickups or whatever, um, that's what these are for. Okay, so what you do is you have always uh, an input and an output, which honestly makes zero difference. Okay, and that's what we have here on the side. You'll see an in and uh, out. Okay, over here. And what do we do with these? There's the two jacks on the side. Okay, so it doesn't honestly matter which one you put in because they're in parallel. Just know that you have two things here. Can you plug two instruments in and just go out one channel into the PA? No. <laughs> uh, that's not a thing. If you're using a DJ setup, can you use like a right and a left and go out into the PA? No. Okay. Uh, this is because of the same thing if you have an amplifier that has two jacks on it, the quarter inch jacks, which are like guitar chords. Um, if you actually plug into the same channel with two guitars and you turn one guitar down, it turns the other guitar down. If you've never noticed that, yep, it does. If you turn the tone down on one guitar, it turns the tone down on the other guitar. So you don't get to do things like that. So the basic job of this is you plug an instrument into the input again or the output it honestly makes zero difference and we convert it over to an XLR or a microphone cable which will then go to the mixing board okay uh, the microphone cables have a lot less noise and they can can travel hundreds and hundreds of feet um, and not degrade uh, your signal you know, whereas a regular quarter inch guitar cable or so forth, anything over 20 feet will start getting rid of your high end and they make more noise than an XLR cable. 
Okay. So, if you are like a bass player using an amplifier and going into the PA system, you would plug your bass in, okay, over here, and then you would bring a cord out of here back into your bass amp. Okay, so you can use your bass amp and nothing is interfered. This here, XLR, goes to the PA system. Your amplifier will not in any way affect what is going to the PA system. Okay, so you can turn your bass amp up, you can turn treble into it, put more bass into it, change anything you want, and it is not going to affect the PA that you spent so much time trying to get a good sound out of. Okay, people will ask, can I just use this, the line out that is on the back of my amplifier and go to the PA? Uh, bad idea. Um, number one, you're going to get a lot of noise from it because you get a lot of noise out of your bass amp, especially if you're using a lot of high end and if things are not grounded properly and so forth, which I will mention in a second as far as grounding goes. Um, anything you do and you will do it on your amplifier will affect the PA. If you turn your bass up on the amplifier, if you change the EQs on your amplifier, it's going to take that and send it to the PA and it will change everything that you work so hard to make sound good in the PA. Uh, everybody turns up on stage. Okay, so that prevents you from doing that and then destroying the mix by making your bass the loudest thing out there. Okay, so you do not want to use like a line out on the back of your amp, like if it's a quarter inch, go to a line out and then here to the PA. You don't want to do that either. Um, as far as anything goes, any amps with a line out. It's just not a good thing. Again, it takes whatever you're changing on your amplifier and sends that to the PA. Bad idea. Okay, so again, the in and the out is if you have an acoustic electric and you have an acoustic amp, you just take a cord from your acoustic, plug it in right here, come out, go right into your acoustic amp like normal it's just like having one cable it just makes a pit stop right here and then it goes to the PA system over here okay so that's all that is and you're like well why can't I just simply um, take my quarter inch guitar cable like I've been doing all this time and just plug it into the mixing board um, it's not a good thing you um, will get all the hums and buzzes and things that you don't think you're hearing but are definitely there if you're going to plug a straight guitar cord into the PA system. Not a good thing for anything. Everything should be XLR. Everything. 100% of everything. And for you DJs out there or people recording at home, yes, everything should be like this. They do make like a four or five channel uh, direct boxes that can mount in your rack. So if you're using a, uh, doing a DJ gig or recording or whatever that's in stereo, you can run uh, into one channel of a direct box, like the one that's rack mounted, and then run your other side, your left and your right, into another channel of your direct box. But if that includes having to have just you know two of these just to go right and left, then so be it. That's the way you must do it. Going two of them in here, no, it will not work. Okay, so um, that's the way to do it when you uh, have multiple uses for direct boxes. Just buy a rack mount unit and things can stay hooked up forever that way. Okay, another thing that the... Um, Acoustic will do, like I said, just go into it, out of there, into your acoustic amp if you use one. If not, you don't have to bring anything out of here. You don't need it. Okay? Uh, you can come out of the output, go to the PA, and just like normal, if you have your acoustic just coming back at you through the PA monitors, that's what you'll do. You're like, but I can already get away with using my just quarter inch guitar cord. Stop it. <laughs> there are big reasons coming up. 
okay number one being over here okay you're gonna see a what says ground lift okay there's a switch on all good direct boxes right here okay and that is because something's going to be making a lot of noise uh, whether it be an ice machine at a bar that happens to be on the same uh, outlet same circuit as anything on your PA your guitar rig anything um, it will be making some noise through your stuff so if anything's making noise and you know it's coming from your rig you can always tell from the PA just simply put on some headphones and hit the PFL button prefade listen button and check each instrument and find out where the noise is coming from and flip the switch on that direct box okay when you flip the switch the noise will stop nothing else will happen just the noise will stop okay want to remind you on a direct box that uh, they also called it DI um, that actually stands for direct injection uh, that sounds <laughs> like a porno thing there some direct injection okay so that's what that stands for not uh, direct interface or what some people think okay so um, the other control you will have and I'm going to show you a live demonstration of all of this uh, including the uh, noise being ground lifted and so forth there is what is called a pad or attenuation um, over here okay it, it'll say pad on here and what it actually does you'll see uh, minus 20 DB that's decibels minus 40 DB minus 40 is basically off why would you use such a thing uh, there's a couple reasons and a, cu a reason for both uh, that I personally use. Okay, it should be on zero. That means it's just like nothing is being tampered with. And I'll show you this being used as well. But like say you have an instrument that is way, way, way too hot and it just constantly red lights and overdrives a channel on the PA system and that will not go away then you can simply take the switch on the side flick it to minus 20 decibels and that will take away any overdrive going to the PA system okay and then you'll have to turn the volume up a lot on the mixer will that make a huge uh, bunch of hum and stuff by having to turn it up so much no you've actually just simply taken the actual decibels down here and you're just bringing up a very quiet signal over there um, and I'll show you how that works here in a moment what is a great thing is the minus 40 decibels okay flick it again minus 40 and that is like dead quiet you're not gonna find much use for having to be that quiet other than if you use things like your um, instruments that have batteries in it okay if you plug in an electric bass that is active has batteries in it an acoustic guitar that has batteries in it and you just go plug it into the PA system while the PA is on um, you've probably heard this before but it just pops as loud as can be and can easily blow the horns in your PA and then also the speakers but the horns have a good chance of blowing as they would in your monitors um, so an easy way to make sure they don't because you're not always going to have a sound man around a lot of people just run their own sound is simply put your um, pad switch here your attenuation switch put it on that minus 40 and it'll be dead quiet and then safe to go ahead and unplug your instrument okay so that's a great thing and that has to do with the PA only you'll still be popping through any amplifier you have unless you turn the amp off to begin with okay so that's basically what a uh, direct box does it takes everything that should be sent to the PA via a cable okay over to the PA system things like in a live band situation where you have a guitar and a guitar amp you put a microphone on the guitar amp you don't need this okay at all 
unless you're recording and you don't want to use a guitar amp then you just simply plug right in there and how do you do that you do it after all of your effects or after all of everything else so so you've got 10 effects pedals hooked up wherever you would normally put a guitar cord and send it to your amplifier you just simply plug it in here and it goes out to the PA or the mixing board or your uh, recorder whatever you're using your DAW okay and just goes there right into the mixer and that's it okay people want to know where to put it in their signal chain it's after everything so just like I said right before it would go to your amp same hole <laughs> okay so you take that cord plug it into the quarter inch over here on the input or the output it makes no difference but then you just take it over to your mixer over there if anything's buzzing hit the ground switch um, if any if it's overdriving real bad into the PA or the mixer of any sort uh, you can change go 20 decibels uh, less over here on the side okay so that's what we got here uh, drums uh, acoustic drums you're gonna mic them so you have a bunch of microphones don't need this okay um, if you are using external sound things you know like pre-recorded stuff you know from a synthesizer or from anything in your show of course you're gonna have to use this again why so many because that's a must uh, some people use you know 20 of these on stage it's just the way it is you do not put guitar cables into a mixing board you simply what what about if I do it this way then can I do it no you do not put guitar cables into a mixing board period uh, if you're doing it you're doing it wrong and you're doing an injustice to your sound you're doing an injustice to your band if you have electronic drums guess what yep they go into these best thing to do is have a kick drum going into one channel from your electronic kit and a snare drum going into another channel then you can do the rest of the kit with just one direct box but out front it's always nice for the sound man to have a separate control over the kick drum and the snare drum because they really need attention the rest of it is pretty much cut and dry and already mixed for you okay so that's a basic rundown on these this particular model by whirlwind is only like 25 bucks okay they can go up to a few hundred um, if you get into like bass players get into what's called a sans amp those have a built-in preamp in them they will have a battery or be controlled by the phantom power on your mix it's a 48 volt signal that would power it um, these if it were active would have a 9 volt in it makes a lot of sense huh use 48 volts or 9 volts <laughs> anyway but yeah that's phantom power for you I hope you enjoyed the fuzzy thing here I'm gonna go give you a real-time demonstration on bass guitar of how these work and let you uh, hear and see the features of them and um, that should be that then I will actually go through and answer the 239 questions I actually took out a bunch of the questions I highlighted ones that you would probably have questions about since the other one was so thorough <laughs> this is the best video I've ever seen um, no this is the best video you've seen and again real time real life use of this coming up uh, right about now all right you guys stay groovy and here we go okay folks I'm going to show you via bass guitar how this whole thing works I'm gonna show you the direct box here in a second but what I told you before this is an active bass guitar it's got a 9 volt in there and just like those of you who understand what active things are again these and then acoustic electrics that have a 9 volt in them um, you never want to take your uh, guitar cable and plug it into an active instrument when your channel on the PA is turned on you're gonna blow some stuff up and if it's not yours uh, you're really going to be paying through the nose to get new PA system stuff for the sound man 
if you blow up your own sound system, it's still going to cost a lot of money. I'm going to go ahead and chance it by plugging in my bass because I have my attenuation that where I could take it by uh, reducing the um, output by 20 dB or 40 dB decibels again. But I've got it on zero so it's doing as if nothing were cut. I'm going to plug it in. Only the PA is on, not the bass amp. Okay, so there's the hole. Here we go. That could blow some stuff up. That, that's really rough on your horns and so forth. Okay, so not a good thing. There it is through the PA system only. Okay, I will shut this down and I will show you again how this is connected. Okay, the direct box that I'm using is right here. Here's another one just like it. I'll use it for different things. Okay, the gold cable right here on top. That's where my bass guitar is going to. So it's coming out of the bass guitar to where it says in, not that it matters, of the direct box. What actually happens then is just the microphone cord takes it to the PA system, which is this box here on top. So it's just a PA head with a 10 channel mixer on it. And I'll show you an example of it clipping here in a second because there's too much output on the bass. Okay, and then we have to turn down the attenuation down to minus 20. Again, if you use minus 40, it's basically off, which is what I want to show you here in a second. This black cable down here, the output, that's going back to the bass amp. So it's basically just making a loop here, uh, just like you have an adapter that just hooks the two together. That's actually what this is. So bass goes in, bass goes out back to the amplifier so I can hear my amp. Okay, then goes to the PA so everybody else can hear it through the PA. That's all this is. Okay, but um, I have made sure that there is a problem uh, with things that are plugged in in this room that will make things hum and we are going to have to flip the ground switch so we can show you what it does there. Okay, so now that we have that puppy going, I want to show you the input that is happening way up here on the mixer. Okay, so it's up here on channel 6. Okay, it's the last one that's plugged in towards us. Okay, this light right here is going to come on because I'm going to be simply playing on the low E string and having it loud. Okay, so I will show you what that does. I'm just sitting on a stool when you hear these noises. It's not me emitting <laughs> any gases. Okay, so. light flashing. That cannot be happening through a mixing board. That is major distortion happening. Okay? So that's what's going on. So what I do is I go to our direct box and I go over to the side where we have our switch right down here where my pinky is and I'm going to take that and flick it up one position. It's going to minus 20 decibels. Okay, I'll do that on my main one. Okay, so right now we have this going on. The uh, now I'm going to flick it while the noise is going. Now it's this loud. That's all the louder it is. But it is not going to. allow that to clip or peak anymore. Now we just turn up the volume in the PA. It's making things right here is nice and loud, no distortion.
do acoustic guitar. Okay, so anyway, that's what happens with that. Very groovy, and it showed us what's going on with the mixer. Okay, so we went through and showed you how to use the attenuation. Let me bring it back to zero. That is loud as all get out. <laughs> Okay, so it's turned back down. And so now I'm going to show you uh, what happens with the um, ground lift. Okay, again on the side where I showed you before, the ground lift. If you do not have that, and again you're running a mic microphone cable from the back of your amp, any amp over to the PA or from your line out of your guitar thing or whatever, that's useless and does not have a ground lift or loop on it. Um, here's what happens. Right now um, I've got it on either ground normal or ground lift. People are like, why don't you just leave it on ground lift if that's where the noise changes. Your, your noise will change throughout the night. Different things can happen and you might have to switch it in the middle of a song. You never know. Weird things happen. There are there are aliens on stage. Okay, so right now everything's normal, but again I have set up something that is causing interference in the room. I just simply turned a um, guitar effects uh, power supply upside down and plugged it in, and it causes this. So anything can cause a ground loop. Okay, I'm just going to simply change it the other way and just show you what a simple somebody the stupid guitar player put his pedal power supply in wrong. Okay, so now we have noise off. It's gone. Back on. You got noise. Some of this will get really, really loud on us. Uh, here in a little bit, it can be really loud. Okay, there it's off. Back on. Listen to the high end. Now it's off. Okay, so uh, we'll check it again a little bit, and it could be extremely loud. Again, there and there. Um, people are saying, yeah, can I just leave it where it's quiet? Like I said, it's going to change. <laughs> okay, and it will get a lot louder. You get a whole bunch of people plugging stuff in, and again, ice machines and freezers and all kinds of things running at a club. You can't imagine the different noises you're going to pick up uh, through this puppy. Okay, so we've only listened to uh, the PA, so the bass just going through the PA system. What about our amp? Okay, let's turn the whole PA thing down. Okay, it's off. Here's the bass amp over here. Okay, it sounds very different than... Okay, say that's the sound you want out front because it works best in the mix. Okay, again, no matter what you do to your amp, because you have it ran through here, um, nothing's going to change it. Okay, if you change the volume, your treble, your bass, your compressor, anything, it's not going to affect the mains. So say you had to change EQ so it sounds way different than your amp does, because your amp is your personal monitor. It is not for the audience to hear at all, despite anything you've ever heard or believe in. Um, your amp is your monitor, um, and again, nothing else. Maybe something for the people on stage to hear. I play so quiet on my guitar that people always have to have me in their monitor. Um, it's just the way it is. I don't want to blow my ears out. Um, anyway, so that's that. The PAA. No matter what I do down here. And I want to change this. difference to the PA. But even if it was um, on and my volume barely on, that would
could change it through the PA drastically if the microphone cord was plugged big time into the back of the um, bass amp head. Let's check our noise level. You can hear it now. I just flick the ground switch, listen to the noise. Now I'll flick it. Okay. The other one's just the bass amp. Here. Which means I probably need to stick a ground lift switch on the bass amp. They used to have them on the back where you could flick them. Now you have to put a three prong to two prong adapter on there. I use them all the time. Uh, sometimes you just have to. Um, I have to use them on my guitar amp all the time and quite often on this PA head. Um, there's just certain things that have to be done. Okay, now, annoying. So again, if you were, had your microphone plug, microphone cord plugged up the back of your amp, go into the PA system, okay, here's what would happen. Let's turn them both on. And the PA's on. Yeah. PA's on, bass amp's on and I go to pull the cord out of this active bass. Now if you had an active direct box, okay, you would really blow some crap up. Listen, here we go, plug it in. Holy crap. <laughs> now imagine if there were 48 volts uh, from uh, the phantom power on the mixing board instead of nine volts. You would definitely blow some stuff up. So again, um, here's the PA. I'm going to flick the switch over here on the side for the uh, minus 20 or minus 40 decibels. Here's minus 20, minus 40. It's still there, barely. Plug it back in. Har hardly anything. Nothing to worry about. That's like somebody going to a mic and going, <laughs> okay, so we have fixed that. There's nothing. You just take it out, plug it in, turn it back to zero on the side. You're ready to go and you don't have to pay out a fortune to the sound company or your band to replace everything. Now your acoustic, it'll be the same thing. No different. Exactly like this and your keyboards and so forth and so on. Um, you just plug the instrument into the input of your direct box and if you have an amp of some sort for those it goes back out of the other quarter inch back into your amp so it just makes a little u-turn there and then you just run that to the PA and that's the way it goes and again do not use anything on the back of your amp that you think can go to the PA. Don't use it at all. Okay, um, right below us here, I have a mixing board for my keyboards. I've got four channels filled up, but the output of that entire mixer, which allows me to adjust um, the keyboards and bring them up uh, through the monitors and the main PA, um, is hooked to a direct box. So I only have to use one direct box instead of three, one for each one. I actually use my mixer to submix all three keyboards and works out great. So you won't need a gazillion of them for each keyboard. Okay, of course, if you have a keyboard player on the other side, he gets one too. Duh. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start answering questions now. Okay, not your questions you have right now, but the questions that the person who made the best EQ a DI video ever uh, did not answer in his initial thing so we'll cover it all um, also at the beginning of his video which a lot of you have not uh, bothered to listen to all of this yet um, they're like uh, the video starts at two minutes and whatever it's like, no it starts at the beginning and there's some helpful hints right there um, so anybody who posts well it starts at whatever I do block you and I do erase your comments. Yeah, <laughs> I do that to people all the time. Um, I don't allow people to put little uh, time stamps in. So you watch the whole video or skip ahead and lose out on a lot of information.
information. <laughs> yeah, I suck like that. Okay, and everybody t ask the other guys that do this uh, reviews and tutorials. Must love the sound of your voice, huh? <laughs> After a four minute video, the guy loves the sound of his voice. Okay, yeah, I love the sound of my voice. That's why the videos are so long. So anyway, let's uh, go answer some questions some folks have. Okay, so it's time for viewer mail. No, again, 243 questions that uh, were asked on the best video ever about drag boxes. Okay, since they answered so many things. Yeah, I'm bitter. <laughs> okay, first thing says, this is the best DI explanation I've ever heard. Okay, and what did the guy say? Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, he wrote down, the guy that made the video, although there is always a possibility for noise in any cable, the cable quality is very important. Okay. Um, cable quality. Hmm. It's up to you. There was a company called Monster Cables for a long time. They went out of business. Why? Because their cables sucked. Right now there's Megami here in 2020. And um, <laughs> I sent mine back. Let's just say that. But yeah, if they're not messed up and have a broken ground, then yeah, it's nice to have a cable. Okay, that's the only one on that page. Okay, this person just simply said, I yellow highlighted just uh, some of the questions. Just looks like an impedance matcher. Okay, so yeah, it transforms, you know, your cable to your guitar cable up to 600 ohms, but it has the attenuation and it has the um, ground lift on it, so it does what a direct box is supposed to do, not just uh, an adapter that switches from quarter inch to XLR, so it's not that. Uh, let's see what we have here. This is from the guy who made the video again. I will set 30 to 40 feet as an example. There's not much of a limit on a good cable, of course. Okay, so a good, <laughs> a good guitar length, guitar cable length. Uh, after 20 feet, uh, degradation starts to set in. Again, microphone cables. Uh, that's what's in a snake. A snake, if some of you don't know, that's the big round cable that hooks into your mixing board that can go 300, 400 feet, or 100 feet, or 50 feet. Anyway, out to your sound man, if you go to the arena, all the microphone signals have to get out there somewhere and they're not plugged in with a guitar cable so XLR cables um, inside of that snake there are sometimes uh, 40, 48 of them in there and they might run a couple snakes to have um, 80 some, 96 channels and so forth out there and um, they can run as long as you need to and they're not gonna have a degradation in their sound so so much for that guy. Um, on here, it says, it, um, I think I answered this one, is it possible to connect an active guitar into a guitar processor, effects processor, to a passive DI, um, to an audio box, and have a balance signal, balance signal being the um, XLR cable, because a guitar cable is what's called unbalanced, XLR is balanced. Um, so is it possible to have an active guitar, so EMG pickups or something like that, going into an effects processor, going to a passive DI, which makes no difference if it's active or passive, makes none, zero, nada, which I mentioned earlier, uh, to an audio box um, to have a balanced signal. Um, yeah. <laughs> So if you ever have that question, don't ask me. There's the answer. This guy says, Hi, I want to plug my guitar straight into the mixer when playing live, and I read that I need a DI box for that, not to destroy the signal or something like that. Is that true? And in that case, how do I plug it in? I have a pedal board, so what goes where? Okay, I've answered that one after 
wherever it would come, the guitar cable, out of all your effects, and then the cable that comes out of that that would go to your amplifier normally, okay, since you're going into a PA directly and not using your amp, you just take it out there and plug it right in the direct box. So not at the beginning of your audio chain, at the very end of it, okay? And that goes, again, right into the direct box and a XLR out to the mixer. And you'll want to hear yourself, of course, through your PA monitors. Okay, next page. Um, I know it's an old video. I hate that. People say, oh, this is an old video, but, man, there's all the answers are, <laughs> and some of the best lessons are old videos. Check out old videos. People ask me all the time, can I do a video on whatever? And it's like I've done 30 of those videos in the past. Check out people's old videos, okay? Um, I know it's an old video, but does guitar cable, bad, bad uh, <laughs> grammar, but does guitar cable go directly into the direct box or the amp into the direct box? Um, both. <laughs> okay, again, like I told you, your uh, bass guitar or your acoustic electric goes in to a quarter inch out of that uh, other quarter inch into your amp. Okay, then your XLR goes to the PA. Next one. Yeah, you're seeing I'm getting about one question per page here. A uh, person says, I have pedals I connect directly. Most are much most are too much to power this will be perfect to control the volume gain settings <laughs> okay oh ask will this be perfect to control the volume and gain settings um, if so setup would be guitar x amount of pedals then a di box and then an interface um no Okay, so if you're talking about, which I know you are, I have pedals, I connect them directly. Most are too much power. This will be con perfect to control the volume and gain settings. Uh, the only thing you're going to be able to control with a direct box would be the um, switch for the minus you know, 20 dB or what have you. You can do it via that if that's what you're asking. Um, otherwise, just turn your gains down. You know, you've got many places in your signal chain to do it. Um, it's best, if possible, to leave your direct box on zero, um, but it is meant to take excessively uh, wacky noises and sounds that are you can't control normally and bring those down. There aren't many. Um, except for really hard pop and slap and bass players and then uh, some electronic drums, you know, just amazingly loud signals. So I can't imagine a guitar player having too much of that. Okay, this one says, hey, thanks, that was helpful. Um, I learned a lot about this stuff. I got a Focusrite 6, 6, uh, gig, sorry, 616 interface it has four inputs, but two have only two have preamps. Okay, familiar with that. It says I need at least three inputs. Well, get yourself a mixer. <laughs> okay, I'll shut up. Would getting a DI box allow me to boost and use my guitar signal in one of those non preamped inputs? No, there's no boost on there, only cutting. So you cannot boost a signal using a direct box. Get a, another mixer. You can add it to one of those channels, it's called submixing. You don't need to replace the mixer you have, but you can submix, meaning get a 10 channel mixer and send it through, you know, different things through there. This one says, I play acoustic guitar live. Do I need one of these? Yes. <laughs> I've already told you how to do it. Okay, so if I'm going from my bass to my mixer only one meter away, it means that it's not necessary to buy a DI box. Uh, all the best. Uh, your video is perfect. If it was perfect, you would have the answer to that. Yes, you need a direct box. You do not take, even if you're standing on top of the mixing board, you still need a direct box. Yeah, great video. Um, this person, I'm subscribed right away. Informative video. Quick question. Again, 
yes, I'm bitter. If you had a, <laughs> such a great video and you have a question, then he didn't do his job. Um, if I use it for stereo acoustic guitar recording with two mics and all, well, I need a stereo DI box. It says I will need a stereo DI box dual channel, right? No. Um, I heard two mono DI boxes won't be the way to go with stereo acoustic guitar recording. He said he's using two microphones. Microphones don't plug into that. So why would you do it? If you're miking an instrument, you don't need direct boxes. You're miking them. It's like if you're miking a guitar, a guitar amp, you don't use a direct box. You wouldn't want to use one anyway unless you're recording and then nothing's better than miking the amp. You know, going direct always blows dog compared to miking the guitar amp. It just does. Okay, another one says, yes, I plug drums into the PC via MIDI and then output through an external sound card. Yes, external sound cards. Always, always, always. Don't use... Um, the outputs of like your computer, you know, the headphone outputs. Never use those for anything in the world. If you're a DJ and you're, or anything, and you're using the headphone output, uh, you're doing something wrong. Don't ever use a headphone output for anything. Recording, putting stuff directly through a mixing board from the headphone output, no. You're supposed to use line levels, not something that is amplified already to go to your mixer. No, 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 no. So he's talking about he has an external sound card? Yes. Um, so again, I, play, I plug the drums into a PC via a MIDI cable and then uh, the output through, an, output through an external sound card? Yes. And then I can use RCA out or connect the RCA into a direct box. I hope this is the right way. You're doing everything correct. Um, with the RCA cables, uh, you will need um, to simply make them quarter inch at the ends of them. So put an adapter on, make it quarter inch, then you'll need two direct boxes or like I talked about earlier is having just a rack mount multi-channel direct box because you're right there if you're recording just buy one of those, leave it in there instead of having a bunch of boxes and cables everywhere, just buy one of those. Uh, buy a Behringer, you can get them for under a hundred bucks. They work, they work really great, I've got one of theirs and I've got one from a few different people and it's just the way to go if it's like a permanent situation or if it's a DJ situation or even live situations. A lot of things um, are always going to be there if you're the bass player and you stand near the mixer. Hey, your direct box is always there and always hooked up, just ready to roll. So yeah, you're doing it right, but just uh, get those adapters on there. Uh, actually, Behringer makes... Um, one of the best, two of the best, uh, most used DIs out there. I'll put a link below that has the top 10 uh, direct boxes currently going uh, here in 2020. And you go check that out, okay, um, if you're wondering. Okay, so uh, the top 10 direct boxes listed below. This person says, do you know how to set up a feedback destroyer? Has nothing to do, I hate that stuff. When it has nothing to do with the video, what it's about. Um, for you po people wanting to know, the, what, do you, what is a feedback destroyer? Um, it's a sound destroyer. It actually, what it does is takes all of your PA frequencies, and when there's feedback, it shuts down. You know, imagine a 31 band equalizer, and it will actually find that frequency and all the frequencies around it. So, say, like a, a real bad one. Uh, 4k or 6.3k um, those like to really love to feedback you know high-pitched feedback that's generally where they're always going to be um, a feedback destroyer or a feedback ferret or whatever they're called uh, both exist um, it will actually take those two frequencies and then about five more frequencies on both sides of that and shut them down and they will stay off and your entire mix will sound like that until you fix it. Uh, how do you know what's being taken out? Uh, you don't know, unless you can go out front and see what the hell's going on. Never buy one of those pieces of crap. If you have one, throw it away. Um, 
they destroyed everything. This person says, I've been banned by a sound man to plug guitars directly into the mixer um, two years ago. So plugging guitars directly into the mixer, unless it's an acoustic, I don't blame you. Um, there are gigs at casinos where you're not allowed to use amplifiers at all. So you'll have to do what some of these people are talking about and even like this guy's talking about. Um, but again, I told you how to do that. You plug it in as where your amplifier would actually go. You just plug that cord into the direct box and live with what you have to live with, but bring it back to the monitors. Um, so he got banned from doing that two years ago, but I've tried many times before to plug guitars directly uh, without any problems. As I mute the channel whenever I plug in and unplug. Good thing, mute the channel. Because even though if your channel on the mixer is not um, a problem, some mixers, if they turn on the phantom power to power a microphone that needs phantom power, it actually puts 48 volts of signal through every single channel of the mixer. So anybody that unplugs anything or plugs anything in can blow up the flipping PA. Okay, uh, The really high-end mixers have a phantom power switch for each and every single channel which is the way they should be, but most people have cheap mixers uh, like that one I was using a moment ago and it just has one button and turns on phantom power to everything. So this guy is bright enough to know that when he unplugs his uh, guitar from the direct box um, that it's going to blow the hell up. Okay, as I muted my channel whenever I plug and unplug, I know a direct box can protect the mixer that's via using the attenuation switch. But is it guilty to plug the guitar in without using a direct box um, in a practical point of view? Okay, let's try again. But is it guilty, weird, to plug the guitar without using the direct box in a practical point of view? Yeah, you're going to blow crap up. Um, you can use an on and off switch, basically meaning what is called a loop selector that can do A and B, like go from one amp to the other amp. If you use those, you can just plug into it and back out of it again, just like a direct box, but it doesn't have another, it doesn't have an XLR on it. But you can turn on and off your stuff, so you just hit a button and everything's off. Um, do that instead. Okay, easy way to get around that. Okay, thanks for the fantastic explanation. Okay, <laughs> I now have a lot clearer understanding of what DI boxes do. In my band, we have two electro-acoustic guitars. That must be overseas there. Could I run these two into one direct box? And, would, and what would be the best and most rec economical one to get? No, you cannot. Like I explained earlier, um, you cannot do that. And then they both go into one channel? No, not a, if one person changes anything on their acoustic, um, it will happen to the other acoustic. If they turn down, the other acoustic will go down. If they change their EQ, the other one will change at the same time. Um, and if you want to make one sound different than the other one out front, you cannot do it. So pony up the 20 bucks or whatever and get your own direct box. Uh, you can get them all day long for 20 bucks used or less. Get Behringer. Um, again, they are at the top of the heap when it comes to uh, direct boxes. They honestly aren't. Re, re, <laughs> go down below, click the thing on the top 10 direct boxes. Um, are they the absolute best in the world? No, but they are on the top of the list and I have to agree with them on a good sturdy box to be able to use. Uh, even the IMP2 by Whirlwind is still one of the top boxes. They're built like an MXR pedal, man, like a flipping tank. You can run over them all day long. They're going to last forever. Okay, we're one-fifth of the way through this. This person says, I've ignored buying DIs, and about a month ago I went uh, with my band to a gig where they had professional sound equipment, but they didn't know a rock band <laughs> was going to the event. So they didn't bring any uh, DI boxes. They ended up putting mics uh, even close to the bass amp. Okay. 
So a rock band needs DIs, but nobody else does. No, everybody needs drag boxes, period. Church bands, a person with an acoustic guitar and sings, yeah, he still needs one. Yeah, but I've been doing mine all along, just plugging directly into the PA. Um, bad, bad idea, dude. Um, a bad idea for everything I've told you about. Um, if you're getting noises, you're getting whatever, it's just a bad idea all around. Spend the 20 bucks. Okay, and he's talking about miking the bass amp. Yeah, a lot of people do. Here's the thing with a bass amp, if you're using like an SVT cabinet that has eight tens, or if you're using any cabinet or combo that has just one kind of speaker, like four tens and nothing else, no tweeter or horn, okay, then it's fine to go ahead and mic a bass amp with like, say, uh, a lot of bass drum mics are well. They make mics that are specific for kick drums and bass guitar amps. Um, where it starts getting weird is if you use an amp that has like a 15 in the bottom cabinet, four tens cabinet with a horn in it. You've got basically a PA system, which is great. Okay, that's what it's going to go through anyway. It's going to go through a sound system, which has subs, mids, and highs. But how are you going to mic those? You're not. Um, I've never seen anybody do it. They just, and that's sad. Um, if they're using like I was using, uh, which are two 410 cabinets with a horn in each cabinet, um, I would have to mic the 10s, and I'd have to get a um, nice um, condenser mic to mic the horn. It's just the way it would have to happen. Okay, you'd need a close-up mic on the um, speaker. It's always best to mic from about 30 feet away if you're in a studio, but live, <laughs> mic up close to the speaker and then mic the tweeter too, but they always forget about the tweeter where all the cool pop and slap sounds are coming from. But yeah, you can mic it. And for a pro sound company to forget DIs, that's moronic. Um, it don't matter what kind of situation it is, you use DIs, direct boxes on everything except for the guitar and the acoustic drums. Okay, great video, man, one question. Um, it's that one question. If my bass guitar amp already has an XLR balanced output, do I need to get a direct box um, or DI? Or it's not necessary. So the, pa the path would be bass guitar to the amp head with a balanced XLR out into his DAW interface. So he's trying to go out of his uh, mind. He's trying to go out of his amp into his uh, recording. Um, no. Just use a direct box and nothing else. A compressor. Always use a compressor. Okay. Uh, how do I connect my laptop to the DI? Do DIs have a mini jack? Blah, 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 so I can connect it. No. Adapters. You have quarter inch and you have um, the XLR. So no mini things. You have to use an adapter. No matter what your question is. Um, do DI box... <laughs> nice English, dude. Do DI box can retain acoustic guitar including tapping and percussion etc. Thanks for reply. I'm a stickler on English here. Um, yeah, direct box retains all that if no matter what you're using. If it works when you're just plugging in then it does exactly whatever you do. If it comes out of your PA or amplifier without using a direct box it's gonna be the same thing. You're just gonna have a better hookup than before. It's not going to change your sound any. Okay, what's the difference between active and passive direct boxes? One's uh, got a battery, one doesn't. Okay, like I had said before, that's, and that's the honest to God's truth right there. Um, one might have a buffer in it, which uh, will give you extra um, corrective signal to get from like your instrument to the direct box if you're using like a 20 foot cable and then from there back to your amplifier so that's one reason there would be uh, an active DI to use like 40 feet 
of guitar cable and still have a decent sound get back to your amp. Other than that, the only reason to have an active one would be for um, like a preamp on there, like I said, you know, Sans amp or um, there's a few Fishman, Samson and so forth that have um, EQs and so forth built strictly for the PA system, not for anything else. It won't change what's going on on your amp, but you can EQ it before the sound man EQs it. <laughs> so there's that. Okay, next one. Uh, could I use my balance quarter inch to XLR cable to replace the DI? No. That's just, again, you're not getting all the, uh, you're not actually making any kind of a balanced to unbalanced impedance matching transformer. First you have to match the impedance, and then you're just matching, you're just taking two different jacks and putting them together. Not a good thing to begin with. And then you have no uh, attenuation and you have no ground loop. Okay. This person. Uh, love to hear yourself talk much. I already addressed that one. <laughs> Again, in a four minute video. Like to hear yourself talk much. Okay, this person says, I'll tell you what a direct box does. It destroys your tone. Suck it. <laughs> You're out of your flipping mind. Okay, next one. Does it change your tone at all? None. Zero. Nada. Mm -mm. Unless it has a built in preamp and you change your tone. Will this reduce the noise I get from my amp simulator software and my Personas audio box I2 uh, into BIAS FX2 or Overloud THU? Um, what if I use the send on my Katana and I take it into my interface? Uh, what if you do all that? Use a direct box, go into the thing. Um, it's best to use a guitar amp microphone, but if you're using SEMS simulators, you know, that's what you're doing, then direct box. If you have an XLR somewhere, that's where you put it. And it's gonna give you more options than not having it. And just, it's all around just better for you. Um, hi, I have a problem. Oh, good. I have the Roland UA55 interface. I play live with laptop and the Roland UA55 which goes into a DI box which is connected to a PA. The problem is that I have no sound coming out. I have signal but no sound coming out. That's the problem with your gear. You have no sound coming out. It has nothing to do with your direct box. If you have signal and nothing's coming out then either you don't have your PA turned on and the channel up and that's it or you have the uh, direct box with the attenuation shut off or minus 40 db that is about it there's no other explanation for it can i hook this up to my external mic preamp uh, to my audio interface to make uh, make it line level uh, your external mic preamp yeah, if it's a quarter inch out, you know, you can use the attenuation thing to make sure it adjusts, you know, correctly to make things right. Only if it's just really super high output would you even need to. Uh, does this help to reduce the hum of a guitar with distortion? No, this is not a noise gate. This is a direct box. Okay. If you perform on stage and the main mixer is a long way away from the stage, yeah, so you're in a real band and there's a sound man. Okay. Uh, you connect your gear as a musician using a DI. Uh, you do everything I've already told you. Yeah, all the sound has to go through the sound system. Uh, just because somebody can hear your amp out front without you being in the system or what have you uh, does not mean that it should not go through the system. Just like drums, if drums can be heard without miking them, does it mean you should not mic them? No. Make them sound good in the PA. Make them sound just as loud as what you're getting, but the tones are going to be a lot better. You're going to have thump instead of sound like a cardboard box and so forth. So, yeah. Just connect it like normal. Okay. 
does this remove the heavy gain when I plug my guitar jack into my interface? Um, it can if you use a switch, but it's not going to take gain out of your sound. So, <laughs> so much for that. Uh, I don't know if you know or not, but when you lick your fingers, it helps you grab paper. So don't think I have a real uh, fetish for licking myself. If I was a dog, I'd never stop. Okay, it says, there are different DI boxes as well, active and passive. Which one do you need? That depends on if you need EQ out front. Otherwise, get a passive. Okay, if your source get, oh, slash guitar is passive, meaning no battery, or powered EQ, none of that stuff, an active DI is in order? No. <laughs> um, no. It is passive. So that's like putting a bass guitar regular into a direct box. That does you know, so your bass guitar doesn't have a battery in it. You just plug it into any direct box and you're good to go. Um, if you have a powered source or a guitar meaning there is a battery or something in, inserted, uh, such as a, see a stomp box and all that, then a passive DI is what you need? No. <laughs> it's not the way it works. Again, that's asking if your pickups or anything, anything in your guitar has a battery in it or your pedals have a battery, do you need to go to something that doesn't have a battery? No. You just decide whether you want to use one with a battery or not. That's it. That's all the thinking there is in those things. Okay, very informative video. Why, thank you. Not to this guy. I just picked up a DI. happens to be the SPDI model as... Uh, as show in your video would you elaborate more on the ground lift and DB settings yeah the ground lift will either make your buzz louder or quieter and the DB settings two switches one will make it quieter the other one will make it more quieter okay silly question but gotta ask can you plug say a bass guitar quarter wrench in and get the process signal quarter inch out using that direct box. Okay, again, this is just somebody, a bass player that's using effects and all that kind of stuff, and it goes into their amp, and they want those effects to get to the PA. Okay, you would actually have to run your bass guitar like anybody else, like a guitar player, like I've answered before, um, out of your bass guitar into your effects unit, out of your effects unit into the direct box so that everything that goes into the direct box goes everywhere so I know the cord out going to your amp your effects would be in your amp and the effects would go to the PA system via the XLR okay so that just inserts it just like normal you're just simply looping your guitar cord back around okay so it's like plugging it into a pedal and bringing it back around like usual and then you have a place for a microphone cable there is all that's happening so that's how you get your effects out there okay check my battery level we got a little bit okay in a studio environment uh, chances are <laughs> it's gonna be the same thing uh, but I'm answering questions uh, could you not just plug directly into an audio interface the inputs are the same and it would of thought it <laughs> and it would have thought that it would have do the same job if I were using a DI box in the studio would I run the output into my interface same as everything okay everything is the same nothing changes don't matter if you're in a studio or not they use tons of direct boxes there's things on the wall to plug in your XLRs and direct boxes everywhere there are 48 channel direct boxes mounted in the walls there are direct boxes in the actual control room, so there's that. Okay, before I actually change this, the battery, I will do this. Uh, so I've been using a DI at church with my bass player for years. Um, tone not great, but it works. If tone's not great, that's the sound man's problem, 100%. Nothing else. Should I shell out the money and get a bass 
like a MXRDI or something good? <laughs> okay. <laughs> or will it not change anything really? The church has some sick subs. They don't have six of them. They're, they're just sick. They puke, I guess. And speakers. But I still sound, it still sounds like a card, no, but I still sound like a cardboard box sometimes. That's sound man problem. Or if you have dead strings, that's usually a bass player's problem. Okay, so put some strings on and get a person who knows how to run sound. And everything will be hunky-dory, dude. Okay, we've answered this. Can I connect the line out of a bass amp? Do you know the answer already? The answer is no. <laughs> to a DI box and the DI box to my USB audio interface, or can I do this without the DI unit? Um, you don't want to. Just use the DI. Okay, there's another one down here. Uh, thank you for this informative video. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm going to take all the dude's credit because I answered all the questions. Two questions if you have time to help. One, if an electric guitar is plugged into the box with a quarter inch plug, an electric guitar, okay, should it go into the in or the out line? Either. Don't matter. Again, they're parallel. Um, but if you just want to keep track of which cable is what, you might as well go in. But it doesn't matter. And then number two, what is the difference between 40, 20, and 0 decibels. Okay, it's actually minus 20 and minus 40 decibels and 0. One turns it down 20 decibels, one turns it down 40 decibels. Uh, which should be used? Went through that in the video. Thank you so much for the video and for answering all these two questions. He didn't answer those two questions. I've got it right here. He didn't answer them. <laughs> Uh, here, how will you connect it to a four-channel mixer? You plug it in to whichever channel you're using your direct box on. Okay, next. Hi, I'm re recording my guitar, your electric guitar, straight into mixer line input. You're recording it straight into your mixer line input, okay. Should I be using a direct box with my XLR to my mixer? Yeah. Um, should I use it then? Yes. Also, is there a direct box with a 9 volt tip? <laughs> the 9 volt tip socket built in or do I or do they only run on battery? Don't know what you're asking there. Cheers and good explanation man. If it was a good explanation you'd know this. Anyway I'll answer this. Um, Next question, also, does impedance matching, does it not? Yes, it's an impedance matching transformer. Um, anyway, so a nine volt tip socket built in. Um, no, there are passive and active direct boxes. Uh, here's one though, a tip ring sleeve. Um, there are TRS um, quarter inch jacks, yeah, that are made as a tip ring sleeve. And no, those won't work in here. That's basically stereo with one cable. No, they don't work on them. Okay, next. <laughs> Thanks for the informative video. Now let me ask you questions about shit you didn't answer. Do you know by a chance if a direct box can be placed between a tube amp where the speaker is important and a cabinet? Okay, I know this answer. And there's one answer and there is one that does it that I'm aware of. And I've got one here. Uh, in other words, uh, do the quarter inch inputs and outputs conserve the output impedance? Uh, so a line out can be added to the amp and speaker emulation added after the recording. So he's asking exactly what he said. Uh, can he put the direct box between his amplifier head, run a speaker cable into there, then run a speaker cable out and then into the 
um, PA and will it sound like his speaker instead of just like uh, his amp if he was to run like a line out. Um, PV makes what's called an EDI okay and it's made especially for that it takes everything even from the power amp section everything and um, even has a couple of settings for uh, cabinet simulation on there but it does it takes the entire power of your amp and you click um, a little it's actually a little trim button to go more bassier trebly basically is all you get with a little screwdriver thing but yeah it will handle all the power and gets you as close as you can get um, and saves your amplifier uh, as it's like a dummy load um, if you don't even want to use the cabinet okay but yeah you can use those those actually exist and it's not bad sounding they've been around since like 1982 I've got a PV amp back here that's got one built into the amp on the side of it so it's all on there goes through it and it's ready to roll so a build in it's awesome so you can go online and get them for 10 bucks you know used so there is that one okay next what about the quarter inch output what what use is there for that converting XLR into quarter inch no only goes one way okay so again it goes in and then it goes back out quarter inch to your amplifier if you choose to go out again if you're just using an acoustic electric and no acoustic amplifier you plug into the direct box quarter inch then you just go out via the XLR to your sound system you don't bother using the output uh, you can use that for a tuner if you want plug a tuner into that part um, there you go <laughs> but it does not match it going back the other way it's not meant for that um, I have a PA system and too much noise when I plug almost anything into it I have been wondering about these DI boxes for a long time I see them in the pawn shop a lot no I know supposed to be now I know but no I know so he's seen them direct boxes in a pawn shop and he thinks this is the saving grace for all that it'll save some things but um, if you know how to use an equalizer correctly um, you may not have so many problems don't use an EQ the actual graphic EQ if that's on there it's meant to cut things not to boost so everything will be in the middle and you actually cut problem frequencies you don't boost frequencies that you need you do that per channel but most people get tons of noise by setting an EQ the wrong way. Okay, hopefully that's something to use. Uh, it says, hi Brian. I'm not Brian. Uh, <laughs> I use a Takamine, or Takamine, that's the name of the river that Takamine is uh, named after. Uh, EN10 Acoustic. I love how they just give you the model number of what they're using. It's like it matters not. There are 10,000 other guitars that could be inserted here. And it plugs it straight into a powered mixer for small pub gigs. The mixer is usually within a few feet of me at all times. Would a DI box be of any advantage or enhance my sound in any way? Yes, advantage, no sound. Okay, so yeah, you want it on there. Um, it can also, uh, if you have... Uh, ground lift on there it can possibly save you from getting the shit shocked out of you on some occasions so it's nice to have that ground be proper okay here's this it's a long one that's what she didn't say never to me <laughs> okay so basically this is the same thing as a line out box for an amp that doesn't already have one built in no um, I remember I had a PV amp a while ago, as one word, a while ago, and I actually made one of these boxes myself. I 
bet that's great. But I see below, yeah, it's great. But I think there must be more to it because the one I made was super simple. Only cost me $5 to build. I think it was just a few jacks and a capacitor. Uh, it uh, did not need an XLR output, though. Of course it did, otherwise it's not a direct box. I just used a quarter inch tip ring sleeve output and then went from that into a USB recording interface that had quarter inch TRS. Um, now that I think about it, probably sounds like shit <laughs> because there wasn't any ca cab simulation or anything like that going on. I um, guess I could always run it through a software cab sim later. Ca cab sim later. Two words, sim later. On it after the recording though, huh? Well, I don't know why I marked that one as something to read, but yeah, nice box. That's what he said. Okay, you only have one input. The other jack is a parallel output jack for linking, for instance, another DI box. Uh, you would need two DI boxes, two, T-O. Wrong, dude. <laughs> I hate people that don't know anything about the English language. You would need two DI boxes in order to obtain a stereo signal let's say because you have a stereo RCA red and white to two mono jacks um, yeah you could but just use two direct boxes period separate them don't run them jump one into the other okay nice video oh thanks uh, so is the difference between a quarter inch and an XLR cable that the XLR connection will have less line noise. Um, well, there's definite difference. One plugs in a ground and a hot, and the other one has a hot negative and a ground. Um, XLRs have less noise. Period. Um, some old bases, for the most part, and even some acoustics now and way back when have XLR jacks in them. Um, because they never wanted to use XLR cables, but for the base, um, they would also have to use a converter to get it into their base amp, but at least they got to use a long uh, microphone cable to stay quiet all the way back to the ramp. So, yeah, one is quieter. That'd be the mic cable. Do they make DI boxes with quarter inch outputs? Um, why it defeats the whole purpose. There's no purpose for it. I have a guitar amp with a quarter inch out that I'm running into my monitor speakers. Oh my god. <laughs> my concern is that I don't know if the resistance or wattage is on par with the speakers. Should I, should this be a concern? Yes, it should be a concern. You're destroying things. I just don't want to damage my speakers. Um, <laughs> everything sounds okay but I do hear a bit of fuzz, probably from my Stratocaster pickups. No, that's because you're setting everything up retardedly, or guitardedly. Okay, a couple pages more. Uh, why would you want to convert XLR when recording bass guitar in the studio? Can't you just plug in directly? Don't most Pro Tools HD rigs already have DIs? Um, no, that's all just stupid. Um, <laughs> everything's been asked there and answered, so it's just a dumb question. I'll let you know, though, that he's from Tampa, and it's called You Break, You Fix. <laughs> he, he's going to break and fix a lot of shit going that way. Okay, my Roland TM2 drum trigger module has two quarter-inch outputs, left and right. How do I get them back to the PA board? while keeping stereo without running two quarter inch cables all the way to the board. Two direct boxes, left and right. <laughs> That's how you do it. So, two direct boxes. Um, nothing more than that. Uh, let's see. I did all this. I just read a forum thread about high, low impedance and balanced, unbalanced. 
I am now bleeding from the ears, nose, and eyeballs. My brain just couldn't take it. I have an electro-acoustic guitar with, I assume it has an EQ and takes a battery. You assume. Well, does it have EQ and take a battery? Probably does. Uh, an active pickup. Do I still require a direct box to plug it into your mixer? Yeah. Um, I also own a G5 effects pedal. Should I be able to use that as a substitute? Uh, substitute for the DI box? No, you still need the DI box. Uh, I've not incorporated the effects pedal into my act yet, which is why I ask. Um, yeah, so I told you how to do that. Plug your guitar into the effects. Go out of the effects into a quarter inch on the DI and then XLR out to your mixer. This here says, I now ask out of interest, are there DI boxes designed for both active and passive pickups? Yeah, any DI box. Hello, I have a Mesa Boogie amp. Good for you. And I'm using a, oh, a Koch load box to do silent recording. When I plug the signal from my Koch XLR DI out, and to my audio interface, I have to turn the gain down almost all the way to stop clipping. Would a DI box right before my interface fix this? Um, only if you use the minus 20 dB. That would do it. Okay. I'm getting a bad hum from my studio interface. My studio has eight keyboards, turntables, computers, TVs, and more. You ever walk up to a TV with a guitar pickup? There you go, shut that down. How about up to a computer screen? Hey, shut that down. <laughs> um, all plugged into power strips. Use power conditioners, um, which are then plugged into a Furman power conditioner, um, but you have a power strip. A power conditioner, you're supposed to have many, many jacks back there, or uh, places to plug in back there. Do not use power strips. Um, I'm not reading, I'm telling you what to do. Uh, and all ending up in one socket in the room, not two separate sockets. Yeah, all well, that's your fault. Don't do any of what's on there. And turn anything that has a screen off. Um, I have everything wired into a patch bay, which is entirely quarter and outs. My Personas interface has the dual balanced, unbalanced input jacks on it. So should I use eight direct boxes between my patch bay and the eight inputs on my sound card? At least you're using a sound card. And yes, just get two four channel rack mount DIs and turn all the other shit off except for what you're using. If you're doing a guitar thing, turn all the keyboards off, turn all your TVs and sex toys and everything else off. Okay, three more total things. Uh, can't you just use tip ring sleeve cables? Isn't that technically balanced? Um, no. Anyway, next, I see why you would need, let's make sure, yes, I see why you would need to do this to a mixer, but, B-U-T-T, <laughs> why, but why if you play a live gig, plug the guitar in your guitar amp, van, instead of then, SM57 mix in front of the amp. Why would you plug the guitar into a mixer? Cheesy sound. It wouldn't, but, B-U-T-T, if you use a DI to a, which is supposed to be an audio interface, because audio is spelled with an A, and you use an before audio, or before anything with a vowel, and use a DI audio interface, then, yes, a good idea, <laughs> or a good thing to use if you use VST sound. Okay, guys, a moron. If you're micing an amp, you don't need a direct box. There you go. Answer that. Last one. I know you can buy three quarter inch to XLR, just an adapter, and then you don't need a direct box. No. <laughs> direct box, what you need, not an adapter. So there you go. Everything on direct boxes and answering somebody else's questions. Okay? So, hope you got something out of that, and yes, I, again, I love hearing myself talk. You guys stay groovy and enjoy your direct boxes. Get as many as you need, and that means anything that does not have a microphone on it gets a direct box.
period. Okay? Later, stay groovy.